forever. It was three days. The ancestors called on me to reconnect our people across the entire ocean. Finally, we're back to who we're meant to be. It's my job <laughs> as a wayfinder to finish what they started. It'll be harder than anything we faced before. Well, now I kind of miss the lava monster. You might want to hold on. Oh, finally, we're back to who we're meant to be. Her I want in the first film was to escape, you know? She couldn't yeah. get away from her island fast mm -hmm. enough, but now things have changed. Her island has evolved. She has a little sister now. Uh, she she's, has everything she's ever wanted. Exactly. She has all the things she wanted in the first movie, and now... And now she's being asked to give it all up. So the I Want song is sort of her asking for clarity of of spirit, you know? Yeah. We Our MO is like, when words are not enough, you should sing. And so Beyond, for me, kind of seems like a struggle I'd have in my own head yeah. while I'm making a big decision. Yeah. Um, when I feel like I, I have no one else that I can lean on. Mm -hmm. um, and... It's basically what she's going through. Our ancestors wanted to connect our island to all the people of the entire ocean. <gasps> it's my job <laughs> as a wayfinder to finish what they started. To be a part of many firsts for Disney, I mean, the first Disney princess to ever be allowed to age, you know, mm -hmm. and grow at, from mistakes um, was really wonderful. And we were also, you know, kind of around her age when we booked the job. Yeah. And and so we felt, it, it felt very natural to step into her shoes and to honor her perspective. For us, I feel like musical theater is all about putting yourself in the shoes of someone else and honoring their view on the world. And because we saw so much of ourselves in Moana, like any good Disney princess, like that's why Disney classics are Disney classics, is yeah. because we can all see ourselves in them. It made it easy mm -hmm. because like when Moana was feeling frustrated and overcome with fear and you know not trusting herself like we've all felt those things and it was so easy to like kind of just put that into song. It was separate for a second but you know recently like when it became a film and we got to work with them it was like watching your music be brought to life. For yeah. Sure. No when when Obataya walked in and started adding his magic with his incredible group we were like oh this is what the song always okay. should have been yeah. and mark is so wonderful and because they were such a vital part in crafting the sound of the first movie it was really wonderful to have them help guide us as the story evolved because animation is so crazy and mm. the development of it it takes on a million lives um, before it gets locked. So I think as the story was evolving, the music constantly did. I think like the, the one that evolved the most and sort of we had to go back to square one of a, a bunch was the Maui song, Can I Get a She Who? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because as the story evolved, we kept realizing like the song that we were writing before suddenly made no sense. Right. <laughs> because it, it's just about repositioning. And yeah. it's, yeah. again, the same as every other part of the animation processed like th there's so many shots and script bits and stuff that were thrown out because it just it's constantly evolving <gasps> so serious <laughs> a human could never break my curse now i kind of miss the lava monster let's do this we had to give it to him. <laughs> and it's a number. It is. Okay. And I think we have in this one. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's part of his character, you know? Like, it's Maui's sound, and we had to continue that. It is a sequel, after all. This is a call from the ancestors to sail to new skies and reconnect our people across the entire ocean. Boat snack upgrade, bacon and eggs? Why didn't you bring the pig last time? 